Hi right, folks, this video is about in-text citations, the next step in our um, lesson and unit about using citations in our research projects. So uh, make sure you've got these following bullet points in your notes and you kind of follow along and fill those out as we go throughout this slideshow. So first off, let's talk about what an in-text citation is. Um, an in-text citation is a reference to the full citation within the body of the text that you're writing. So if you're writing a paper, the in-text citation text citation is the little piece of information that goes like right after a sentence or right after a quotation mark that says, hey, take a look at my full work cited to find more information on this source. So how we're going to do build that is it's going to be whatever comes first in the full citation. So you can see in my example, I've got Alonzo Alvaro um, and Julio Carmago. So I'm going to use the last names of the two authors here, um, Alonzo and Carmango. And then if I have it, I'm going to add a page number um, if I do, and I do have page numbers for this source here, as you can see. Um, I'll show you what this looks like in an actual paper. You can see as I'm reading along, I'm reading along, I come across this quote, and then at the end of that sentence, I'm going to let my readers know, hey, this is where this quotation or this information comes from. This is from my source called Co. So I better be able to scroll down to my Works Cited page, and yep, there it is. There's my source um, called Co and all the other information um, that I want my readers to know. Um, so the in-text citation is like a flag. It's just like a reference to the full citation that's coming at the end of your paper in the work cited page. Um, there's some different ways to format this, as you can kind of tell. Um, if you have one author, you're going to do the last name and the page number if you have it. You may not have a page number, and if that's the case, just leave it out. Um, you're going to notice in this first one where I say English teacher Restad said blank, and then I left my last name out of that um, parenthetical citation, the thing in the parentheses there, because I already let my reader know, like, hey, this is coming from the source Restad. You could look in my works cited page and you'd see a, um, an entry under the name Restad. If you have two authors, as I showed you last uh, slide, you're going to use both of the author's names. Again, if you have a page number, you're going to use that. And remember, if you're introducing with both of your sources, um, so I'm using their names, and if I had a page number at the end, I'll show you what would happen. That page number would go at the end like that. Um, and then this is if you have three or more authors. So you're going to use the first name of the first author listed, and then et al. That's Latin for and others. Don't ask me why we use the Latin term at all to represent more than two authors, but in MLA format, there's two authors, list both their names. There's one author, list the first author's name, and then at all. And that's how it goes. And again, if you have page numbers, use them. If you don't have page numbers, leave them out. Uh, but you're not always going to have an author, right? So if you are missing um, information from your full work cited, like the author, you're just going to use the next best thing. Um, so notice how this citation would be filed under the use in my work cited because that's the first letter. I better make sure that my in-text citation is also in those use. So I'm just going to use the article title. And notice how I can abbreviate the article title to something that makes sense. Um, and remember, article titles go both in parentheses and in quotation marks here. Um, so in addition to uh, making sure we have the correct citations, we're also going to be wanting to make sure that we're introducing source information correctly. And we're going to be doing this with uh, signal phrases. Signal phrases is just a way to tell your reader, like, hey, the information that I'm about to give you is coming from somewhere else. It's not from me. So take a look at my example. In this way, according to a 2016 report from the Points of View Re Reference Center, then I have my quote, then I have my source citation information, right? I've set my reader up to realize, hey, this information is coming from somewhere else. And that's a credible place, right? I have some in-depth source information here. I've got the date, I've got the um, location where it came from, the Points of View Reference Center, and I've also got the author's names listed here in my in-text citation. So those are all really important things to add authority and credibility to information that you're pulling in. Um, you don't want to just say, according to a report, standardized tests are important. Well, what report? Where is this coming from? When was it written, right? So here's another example. Journalist Greg Popham explains a standardized test is blank, right? So notice I don't have that parentheses at the end because I've already used the author's name in here. 
And then I also want you to notice my um, verb here. We're gonna use strong verbs whenever I'm signaling information that's coming from another source. So I'm gonna avoid verbs like tells or says or is, like those verbs of being. Um, and I'm gonna try to focus on like active reporting verbs. So explains or qualifies or argues or observes or found. All right, um, last thing we'll talk about is an indirect citation. This is when um, within an article or within a, a text, you are citing information from someone else. And that gets confusing, right? So let's break down this quote in red here. So I've got US Secretary, Education Secretary Arne Duncan recognizes Good, nice, strong, supporting verb. He doesn't just say, he recognizes, like this is a realization that he's making. Standardized tests don't have a good reputation today and some of that criticism is merited, right? But I did not get this information straight from US Secretary Arne Duncan. I got it from a reporter called Roach, if that makes sense, right? And I wanna make sure I use both of their names here because they're both important, right? Um, US Sec Education Secretary Arne Duncan has authority. He is an important authoritative figure on education in the United States, or at least was when he was in office. And I also need to let people know where I got it. So I got this, not straight from Arne Duncan, but from the journalist who wrote the article where I read it, whose name was Roach. Both of those are important things. That's an indirect citation. All right, so I've got some practice. There's a website posted up here on Google Classroom that I want you to take a look at and try to find the in-text citation for it. I'll let you pause the video and give that a shot. Did you do it? So I'm gonna give you the answer here. And you can compare what you got to what I got. So here is my solution, is the pros and cons to longer school days. And why it is that is because if I take a look at this um, source, I am going to look for the author first. And I do not see an author. I scroll all the way up and down. There is no author listed. Um, talks about Walden University, talks about the sources that it uses, all great stuff, no author. So the next thing that I'm going to use is the title of the source. Not the title of the website, the title of the article. So I'm going to use this title. And my suggestion would be to use the full article title here, because if I just cut it down to the pros and cons, you kind of lose the context of what the article is about. So this is what your solution should be. Do you have any questions, comments, or concerns? Good luck, folks. You got this.